Hi, uh, this is Allen High School. We are wrapping up our conversation of titration curves by looking at some of the qualitative aspects and comparisons of titration curves with different strengths. So let's take a look at this. Stronger acids, so this shows a strong acid. This is the weakest of the acids. So strong acids start at a lower pH, but assuming same molarity. You have to be a little careful because that starting point depends on molarity and strength. So they are going to start at a lower pH if you assume the same as if they are at the same molarity, okay? Strong acids are much flatter before the equivalence point. They do not have a buffer region. In order to be, have a buffering um, system, you have to have a weak acid or a weak base. So you notice it's just kind of flat as you slowly but surely you have excess strong acid, excess strong acid, excess strong acid, and then bam, you go up to here to excess strong base, okay? Now, as the strength of the acid decreases, the strength of its conjugate base increases. Now remember, for weak acids and bases, the pH at the equivalence point is the result of an equilibrium with the conjugate base. So as the conjugate base strength increases, the pH at the equivalence point becomes more basic. I guess it was right there. Becomes more basic. Now, as the strength of the acid decreases, there's a bigger jump to the buffer zone. So, if you'll notice on this one here, the weakest has a huge jump until it hits a buffer zone. And then it hits the nice buffer zone, okay? So this one, this weaker acid had a smaller, and it probably didn't start down that low. Let's probably start right here, more realistic, okay? It had a smaller jump. This one had a much larger jump to the buffer zone. So as the strength of the weak acid increases, the pH at the half equivalence point decreases. The pKa decreases. And the Ka increases. Remember they're inversely proportional because it's the negative log. So what I'm saying here, here's my half equivalence point, as I go to a stronger acid, so I'm going from weaker to stronger, the pH at that half equivalence point decreases and that's because my Ka is larger, okay? For all of them, do you notice that all of these ended at the same pH? And that's because for all of the curves, the pH after the equivalence point depends only on the molarity of the excess strong base. Now, I want us to see a comparison with our bases. Very similar. Stronger bases, so the strongest base, if they were all the same molarity, strong base here, the next one would start here, the next one would start here, and so forth. So, stronger bases start at a higher pH, again, assuming same molarity. Okay. Strong bases are much flatter 
before the equivalence point. Again, it's much like the, they mirror the, this is, you know, we're now going with a strong, titrating a weak base with a strong acid. It's flat, excess strong acid, excess strong acid, excess, or excuse me, excess strong base, excess strong base, excess strong base, and then plummet when we get to excess strong acid. Okay? Now, and they do not have strong bases, just like strong buffer. I can't spell, sorry. Buffer region. Same bases and buffer at the same time. I'm getting bubber. Okay, buffer region. Okay, now, as the strength of the base decreases, the strength of the conjugate acid increases. So the pH at the equivalence point decreases. Now, for a base at the equivalence point, the only thing that's present is its conjugate acid. Prior to the equivalence point, okay, let's, let's do what we did earlier. So there's the half equivalence point. Here, if I've got a base, the unprotonated form is the only thing present. At the equi half equivalence point, the unprotonated is equal to the protonated form. In between, all right, we get this. Okay. At the equivalence point, all we have is the weak conjugate acid. This is for the we're just talking about these weak ones now, not the strong ones anymore. And then right here are unprotonated. You should know when, that's one of our objectives, to know when the um, protonated and deprotonated forms dominate. So I want that, I was about to make that backwards. So let me erase that and make sure we have that right. Unprotonated dominates. Okay, being able to label, label that titration curve is critical. Okay, as the strength of the base um, decreases, this says jump. I think it's a jump down or more of a dive or a plummet down to the buffer zone increases. So do you see that from starting point down to the buffer zone, it plummets much more for this weaker one than it did for this stronger base. Remember, the strong base, that's not an issue at all. Okay, we're only talking about the weak bases as, in terms of plummeting to the buffer zone. As the strength of the weak base increases, the pH at the half equivalence point increases, the pKb decreases, whoops, the pKb decreases, sorry, you can't see that, it's an increase, and the Kb increases. I know that seems a little backwards, but that's because we're having to jump from pOH back to pH, okay? So if you look here, do you notice that this, this is increasing strength of our weak bases? the pKb becomes smaller, so the Kb becomes larger. Okay, so, all right, yep. I don't know what else to say about that one. All right, so for all curves, the pH after the equivalence point is dependent only on, that's this here, the molarity of the strong acid. Okay? And then finally, I want to show you what titration curve would look like if it was a polyprotic acid. Okay, so I'm going to make that a little bit bigger here. So, whoa, it wasn't happy with that. Okay, so um, in this polyprotic acid, you will see an equivalence point for each, for each H+. Now, this this is an equivalence point here, 
We've tried to see it when we've titrated phosphoric acid, but it's very, very difficult to form. All right. Now, uh, you want to be able to label all of the different and the dominant species on here. So I am going to, uh, this would be H3A is the dominant species. Here it would be H, excuse me, H2A minus, okay, at that equivalence point, because we've neutralized one of them. Here it would be HA2 minus, and at the very end it would be A3 minus, okay? And along the way, you should be able to find out what the dominant species are for this one. Okay, so that's it for titration curves. My goodness. On to buffers. Until then, this is your best chemistry teacher signing off.